To make the most of life, we can't undervalue the importance of sleep. That's why I want to tell you about a fantastic podcast called Get Sleepy. It helps you fall asleep with original stories and meditations. They're captivating enough to grasp your attention and pull you away from your day-to-day problems, yet so incredibly relaxing that you'll have no choice but to fall asleep. There are hundreds of episodes, so you're bound to find something you love and get a good night's rest. Search for Get Sleepy wherever you listen to podcasts or go to getsleepy.com. This is Optimal Health Daily, episode 2218, Home as Health, by Ryan Frederick of Here.Life. And I'm your host and narrator, Dr. Neil Malik. Hey there, happy Wednesday, and welcome back to Optimal Health Daily, where I read to you from popular health and fitness blogs to help you optimize your health. Now, because it is Wednesday, and like I do every Wednesday, I want to share a little bit of inspiration with you. So here we go. Quote, every day brings a choice, to practice stress or to practice peace. Joan Borisenko. All right. Now that we're in the right frame of mind, let's get to today's post and start optimizing your life. Home as Health by Ryan Frederick of Here.Life 9-11 was a life-altering event. Like many of us, I can remember exactly where I was when I received word of the attack and saw live footage of the Twin Towers collapsing. It was a shock to the system. Soon after, Pundits speculated how our society would forever change, including how many of us would never again feel comfortable flying. Many of those predictions proved wrong. Within two years, U.S. airline travel rebounded to its pre-9-11 levels. We've gone through a similar moment with COVID-19. Much has been written about how our society will change from the pandemic, including its impact on aging and retirement. Predicting how society will change in the midst of a disruptive event can be a fool's errand. For one, I am confident the attractiveness of urban living won't disappear, remote working won't be the norm, and we will shake hands and hug once again. However, I think that how we think about housing will be different. I was a panelist for the launch of the Johns Hopkins University School of Nursing's Housing and Health Initiative. The discussion covered the link between place and health across the life spectrum, highlighted innovative approaches, and discuss the next frontier for important research. I was part of a similar session recently with the Brookings Institute. The pandemic has put a spotlight on the intersection of place and health, and it's something critically important for researchers, policymakers, and perhaps most importantly, consumers to carefully consider. Home as health. Where we call home matters. Research on longevity show us that DNA is a factor, but its significance is far outweighed by other elements. By rough numbers, genetics only account for at most 30% of our longevity. Other lifestyle factors, including the role of place and your living environment, are more influential in healthy aging. Research has highlighted the impact of place. Raj Chetty, an economics professor at Harvard University and director of Opportunity Insights, has harnessed big data to demonstrate how life expectancy can differ by decades based on zip code. And Blue Zones, Lessons for Living Longer from the People Who've Lived the Longest, a book by Dan Buettner, shows specific regions where people have lived significantly longer and healthier. In each case, place had a key role in nudging people towards greater purpose, social connection, physical activity, overall healthy aging, and more. How to think about home. The first step is to think about home as more than a house. Often the terms are used interchangeably. A house has a set address and a physical dwelling, most often a single family house. A home is much more. Home is a composite of our country, region, metropolitan area, neighborhood, streets, and physical dwellings such as a house. But home is more than a physical space. It has economic, psychological, and social dimensions. It is also a feeling. A sense of attachment. Home has a time dimension as well. A connection to home can change without necessarily moving. Friends and neighbors move. Interests shift. The perfect home for one point in time can be a terrible place later on. The right home can elevate well-being. It can help promote purpose, facilitate human connection, catalyze physical activity, support financial health, 
inspire community engagement, and ultimately serve as a boon for healthy aging. The wrong home can do just the opposite. What to do about it? In some cases, nothing. You or a loved one may be in a great spot. It may be the right region, metropolitan area, and neighborhood. The physical dwelling may precisely fit your needs and desires. More often, a minor modification may be best. It could be a lifestyle change, such as making efforts to strengthen social connections or exercising more regularly. It could be a change to your physical environment. Since we spend about 90% of our time indoors, mostly in our homes, even small changes to our place can have a big impact. Small ideas include finding ways to include more indoor plants, utilizing natural colors, and rearranging furniture for better aesthetics and safety. More significant changes can be done through remodeling. In other situations, a more significant change may be required. Maybe it is a move to be closer to family. Maybe it's a relocation to a different neighborhood where it's easier to develop and maintain friendships. Maybe it's a move to a smaller place that's more affordable and more in line with the needs of your current life stage, whether in your 20s or if you're focusing on healthy aging through the second half of life. People who live alone should be particularly cognizant of the impact of place. Older people who live alone are less healthy and they feel sad or depressed more often than their counterparts who live with a spouse or with others. These correlations stand up even after controlling for demographic factors such as gender, race, age, income, and education. Maybe the necessary change is to find a roommate or to move into a congregate setting. Big decisions take time. Pundits aren't the only ones to come to brash conclusions about the long-term impact of the pandemic. Many of us are equally capable of making predictions about the future that don't last the test of time. The key is not making big decisions that we may regret. We do know that our environment helps drive our health and well-being. The pandemic has made this link more obvious. With more research, we'll know more about the factors that matter most when choosing place. Ultimately, it's our choice as to whether we take advantage of this information and add more quality years and make healthy aging a priority in our lives. You just listened to the post titled Home as Health by Ryan Frederick of Here.Life. With increased premiums, larger deductibles, and claims denials becoming more common, health insurance is broken. This is exactly why CrowdHealth was created. With CrowdHealth, your $50 a month membership includes the tools and services you need to get the highest quality healthcare. You'll get access to telemedicine visits, discounted prescriptions, and more without doctors' networks messing things up. Plus, you'll have access to your own personal care advocate who will help you navigate the complexities of health events and even help negotiate bills. And of course, you'll join the crowd, a group of members just like you who want to help pay for each other's unexpected medical events. It's time you opt out of restrictive health insurance plans and let CrowdHealth help fit your healthcare needs. Get started today for just $50 per month. Use code OHD to get the healthcare you deserve. Mandatory disclaimer, CrowdHealth is not insurance. Learn more at joincrowdhealth.com. That's joincrowdhealth.com, code OHD. Dr. Neil here for my commentary. As today's author Ryan mentioned, we can use the environment to our advantage, and it doesn't have to be complicated or time-consuming. One of my favorite tricks when trying to use my home environment to my advantage is to set things up around the house to make the healthy choice the easy choice. For example, by always having veggies on hand and ready to eat. I always keep a giant bag of frozen broccoli in the freezer for those just-in-case days and prep veggies in clear containers at eye level in the fridge. Fresh, non-perishable fruit is on the countertop as a constant reminder too. When it comes to exercise, now this one did take more time and some money to make it a reality, but I turned my garage into a home gym. But by doing that, I'm so much more consistent with my workouts because of the convenience. So yes, we can turn our homes into places that support our health and not detract from it. It just depends on how we want to go about it. All right, that'll do it for another edition of Optimal Health Daily. Thank you so much for listening. Thank you for sharing the show with someone. That really goes a long way to keep all of this going. I hope you have a great rest of your day and I'll see you back here tomorrow where your optimal life awaits.